The history of human revolution has been about a consistent and exponential trend away from dominance by the few to more inputs, productivity, and gains for the many, although the top 1% in the United States still control well over 40% of the wealth. However, it was 10 times that concentrated in Roman times. The advent of capitalism and democracy actually are two opposing trends that achieve this continued common end and goal. Most people tend to think that democracy and capitalism operate on the same principles. Mostly, they do not. Capitalism operates on the Darwinian principle of survival of the fittest. The strong get stronger through success and attract more wealth and capital, causing increasing inequality. The best, most fit innovations get a lot of capital and the worst get starved and die. In other words, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And the more conservative economists and politicians who support this philosophy generally favor a minimum of government interference in the economy and minimal government support for the less fit. This may seem harsh to many, but it is clearly the favored policy of nature in the universe. That was clearly the trend in the long hunting and gathering era of human evolution that has most shaped our genes long term. Since the agricultural revolution, people have lived in increasingly stable, urban, and higher-density environments where cooperation among people of different families, clans, tribes, and ethnic groups was critical for both survival and rising specialization of labor and standards of living. And that is where strong political dictatorships, religion, and military power first emerged. That ultimately brought the more liberal principle of democracy, greater equality and sharing of the power and spoils to ensure the common interest to make such a more complex social and political network for greater scale, specialization, and productivity sustainable. In the old mobile tribal model, it was a win-lose proposition. It was us versus the animals and us versus other tribes in the area. It was bands of hunter-gatherers in areas that won or lost or moved on to a new territory to escape the competition for scarce resources. On a broader scale, it was Homo sapiens versus the Neanderthals, and we won. The principle of survival of the fittest was critical. Critical. How? However. How? However. Even within, even, within, even within such migratory clans, there was the principle of equality or teamwork. Though there were obviously individual hunters or clan leaders who contributed the most, the spoils were distributed more equally to keep the team together and motivated. In the new culture of towns, cities, and nations, and now even more so in a global economy, both win-lose competition and win-win propositions with progressive social and political structures are increasingly required for survival. Cooperation versus competition, liberal versus conservative, capitalism versus democracy, those are the dualistic principles that are necessary to create successful structures as we evolve and our organizations become more complex and interdependent. It is not that one view is superior to the other. The survival of the fittest, or conservative principle, paradoxically fosters innovation, and often the most radical, out of sheer stress, desperation, and random mutations, even though such principles are often considered less progressive. The more democratic and liberal principles foster cohesion and a minimum of unrest and rebellion, which allow a growing scale of cooperation and interaction. This also greatly fosters innovation, especially incremental innovation, through the adoption of successful new behaviors, which is the principle of both expanding demographics and the S-curve of technology adoption. This greater social interaction and adoption of successful behaviors is also the key characteristic that differentiates humans from even the highest primates and more so from the broader animal kingdom. The important point is that we need both conservative and liberal principles in our economies and societies, not either or.
They are like the positive and negative poles that make our planet, relationships like marriage, and even basic batteries work. It is important to understand that in all cycles, including our generational, technology, geopolitical, commodity, cultural, and civilization cycles, both long-term and short-term, there are alternating stages that bring both radical and incremental innovations, conservative, survival of the fittest, and liberal, inclusive phases, and booms and busts that create the best long-term evolution for our lives and for the economy. We cannot get birth without death, innovation without complacency, growth without recessions, inflation without deflation, pleasure without pain, and so on. The very principle of life is duality, or the play of opposites. Life and energy, at its very core, cannot be created without opposite positive and negative poles, again as in a simple battery.